Pitcairn was now able to devote all his resources to the development of the autogyro. Pitcairn demonstrated the capabilities of the rotary-winged craft in 1929 when he flew the Sierva C-8 autogyro on its first cross-country flight from Pitcairn Field to Langley Field, Virginia. The 250-mile flight impressed aviation notables such as Orville Wright of Harold's determination to make the gyro a safe, viable alternative to fixed-wing airplanes. With this point-to-point -point flight completed, Harold turned his attention to the design and construction of his own autogyro, incorporating new features and technical refinements. Within three months, Pitcairn Aviation produced the Pitcairn Sierva autogyro, designated the PCA-1. It was built around the male wing fuselage and incorporated a tail surface which deflected air from the propeller to the rotor blades as an aid to starting the rotor turning. The early autogyros had fixed wings as well as a conventional propeller. Long taxi runs were needed to bring the rotor up to takeoff speed. Once airborne, the rotor blades served as wings and provided lift. The fixed wings assisted in controlling the attitude of the plane. Pitcairn's introduction of the newly designed PCA-2 autogyro featured controls that were generally similar to those of fixed wing airplanes using ailerons, elevators, and a rudder for maneuvering the aircraft. The non-powered rotor was flexible and hinged horizontally and vertically. This essential feature resulted in the advancing blade tilting upward, reducing its lift, thus equalizing the lift of the retreating blade. Subsequent models of the autogyro incorporated more sophisticated technical advances in its rotor controls. To eliminate the need for prolonged taxiing to bring the rotor up to speed, a power takeoff system was connected to the rotor for the startup and disengaged as the takeoff roll began. Thus, the PCA-2 autogyro was capable of short, steep takeoffs. It could attain speeds of up to 120 miles per hour. In flight, with the aid of a headwind, the autogyro could hover over a given spot. Its exceptional maneuverability increased the versatility of this unique craft. The PCA-2 was also capable of slow flight with complete control. This feature enabled a line to be trailed from the moving plane, allowing a person running alongside to attach or retrieve a payload. Pilot Johnny Miller demonstrated the unusual characteristics of the PCA-2 by regularly performing the aerial loop at air shows. By 1930, the autogyro had become a familiar sight over metropolitan New York. The ability of the PCA-2 to perform precision landings was demonstrated in 1930 when the autogyro was flown to New York City to pick up Mr. Sierva. As the inventor watched, the autogyro executed a nearly vertical landing on a city dock. After a convincing display of the autogyro's short takeoff capability, Mr. Sierva was treated to a bird's eye view of the New York City Harbor area. And transported to his final destination on the lawn of the Pitcairn home in Bryn Athen, Pennsylvania. Safe door-to-door -door transportation by autogyro was a Pitcairn dream. In other areas of service, the autogyro came into popular demand from private owners, including commercial businesses, who were quick to recognize its advertising and promotional advantages. In 1931, Amelia Earhart flew the PCA-2 for the Beechnut Company. The autogyro was featured in the Hollywood movie Misleading Lady, which starred Claudette Colbert. 
The PCA-2 played an important role in the exploration of the jungles of Central America in a way not possible by any other aircraft. Police departments, firefighting, and news gathering organizations adapted the gyro to their own particular uses. In crop dusting, the autogyro was able to fly slowly at low levels while the rotor turbulence stirred up plant foliage. This permitted the treatment of the underside of the leaves where insects often find protection. The autogyro was rapidly receiving worldwide recognition. It attracted the attention of the Navy and Marines because of its potential over conventional airplanes. Leading personalities who were enthusiastic supporters of the autogyro included Frank Hawks, respected inventor Thomas Edison, and Amelia Earhart, who set an altitude record of 18,415 feet with the PCA-2 autogyro in the skies over the Willow Grove Airport. Miss Earhart later flew the plane from coast to coast. The highest honor became an historic first on April 22, 1931, when the gyro landed on the White House lawn. The occasion was the ceremony during which President Herbert Hoover presented Harold Pitcairn with the Collier Trophy, an award presented annually in recognition of the highest achievement in American aviation. Others attending the presentation ceremony were Orville Wright, Senator Bingham, and many aviation dignitaries. Flying the autogyro, pilot Jim Ray provided a fitting climax to the ceremony with a dramatic takeoff. Landing the gyro in one of Miami's public parks attracted attention of another sort. In payment for a ticket issued for illegal parking, Jim Ray offered, and the police chief accepted, a ride in the amazing new flying machine. In 1931, Pitcairn introduced two sport autogyros, the PAA-1 and the PA-18, in response to a popular demand by the public for a personal gyro in addition to the family car. This is how the New York skyline looked to the pilots of the Sport Auto Gyros in 1931. New York was home for many of the world's ocean liners, which provided the only means of transoceanic travel until the introduction of the modern airliner. To meet the need for a luxurious passenger carrying auto gyro, Harold engaged the services of Robert B.C. Nordine to help design Pitcairn's first cabin autogyro, designated the PA-19. It was the biggest autogyro built to date, able to carry four passengers in unequaled comfort and reassuring safety. In 1933, the cabin autogyro flew Sierva to Soldier Field Stadium in Chicago. The inventor of the autogyro was presented the Guggenheim Medal for his contributions to aviation. The PA-19 demonstrated its ability to perform short, steep takeoffs within the confines of the stadium. During this trip to America, Sierva brought with him a new concept referred to as direct control. This technical feature eliminated the need for wings or ailerons to control the attitude of the autogyro. The maneuverability of the plane was achieved solely through the main lifting rotor. Pitcairn first incorporated this direct control feature in the PA-22, which made it possible for the pilot to tilt the entire rotor assembly to control the direction of flight. A small rudder assisted in maintaining stability at slow speeds. In 1934, the PA-22 was the first Pitcairn autogyro to perform the jump takeoff, 